Coming up on the South Florida High School football show, the Northwestern Bulls are on their way back. Miramar is down, but far from out. Plus, we'll tell you who the top running backs are in South Florida. All of that and more on the South Florida High School football show. Once again, everybody, and welcome to the South Florida High School Football Show. Joe Zagacki alongside Don Bailey Jr. coming to you from Dave and Buster's right off of I-95 on Sheridan Street. Your eat, drink, and play location for serious football action. All right, Don Bailey Jr. coming up on the show. We're going to have some great highlights from St. Thomas and Don Bosco Prep, plus some big previews as well. But first, in our opening kickoff segment, let's take a look at some of the key teams in Dade and Broward County, starting with the Bulls of Northwestern. Well, Joe, they have a new head coach in Stephen Field, and what a resume. Coached at Hampton, also was a graduate assistant at the University of Miami, coached at the high school level. So you put the resume down, it makes all the sense in the world. They went up to Vero Beach in the springtime, took on Vero Beach, and beat them. Had too many turnovers, but did an excellent job. They've produced some great play out of their offensive line. But really, for a change, we're going to talk about Northwestern and defense, and they are a takeaway machine. They force in a lot of fumbles, and they're getting the takeaway as well. They've got a secondary with Burns and Taylor, which is as good as any in South Florida, and they're going to win some football games. And, of course, they are athletic, and they're becoming a very, very disciplined football team. Yeah, a little bit of a different team, as you mentioned, especially on the ground, able to run the football this year with Darius Tice. He's a good-looking running back. Well, he is, and I think this falls into Coach Fields' M.O. He wants to chew clock. He doesn't want to have a high-risk offense, even though he wants it to be exciting. But he also is a defensive-minded coach where he understands the value of the takeaway and the value of the turnover. He realizes that he's going to be able to match up athletically with most people, and he just doesn't want to shoot himself in the foot. He wants to be in every single ball game, and I think they made an outstanding selection in picking Coach Field. They're off to a great start. And of course, they've got a big showdown coming up against Carroll City. We will talk about that game a little bit later on in our show. Let's go up to Broward County, the Miramar Patriots. They're down, but they're not out. Damon Cogdell does a great job up there. They went on the road early in the year to play uh, Manatee, had a tough game to open the season, but nonetheless, this is a very good high school football team. Well, I, I admire them from going up to Manatee and playing that game. Manatee's got an excellent football team. They're going to be in it all the way till the end. But you look at Miramar and you go back to what you lost again. You lose the best cornerback probably in America. It won't be long until he might be starting at the University of Miami. Then you go and you look at the receiver that they lose, a guy that's already starting at the collegiate level. And you, and you take all of that, you, you, you take D1 starters off the field in high school football and you're going to have some setbacks but coach Cogdill prepares these guys to step in he prepares his sophomores and then his juniors and they're ready to step in and i anticipate that as the year goes on they are going to gain experience and his system will gel together and they'll start winning again now they had a big uh, win last weekend against ely last year they went 13 and one you mentioned damon Cogdill's system they pitch and catch offensively as well as anybody I, the, anybody that I've seen in the state, and when their players go to the next level, he has them well prepared. Well, they're they're instantly ready to play. You know, he, he's a guy that understands the collegiate game. He, he is basically trying to be a feeder system to D1, and, 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 and that's why kids want to play there. They understand that if they play at Miramar, that they're going to be coached up, that they're going to be well-schooled, and they're going to be successful not only while they're at Miramar, but at the next level as well. They have a couple of tough games coming up at the end of September and the beginning of October. They have Cypress Bay and St. Thomas on the schedule. Those will be two big games. Here's a team that's going under the radar a little bit. They might be a dark horse this year out of Broward County. Hollandale, the Chargers of Hollandale, coached by Damian Jones. He's considered an offensive-minded coach. Haven't been in the playoffs, haven't had a playoff win in quite a while, but don't go to sleep on them. No, you can't go to sleep on them. They are improving. They're getting better every single time. They're getting better athletes in the school, and they're going to build their team around their linebackers. They've got a great linebacking core. They're stout at the point of attack, and when you're getting play out of your linebackers, 
you really can can run sideline to sideline. And those guys sit right in the middle, Joe, so it's going to make it difficult for teams to pass on them because they can drop into coverage, but also it's going to make it difficult to run. So if he has a defense that can control the clock and get the other team off the field, give the offense more reps, it'll work. I'll tell you a story worth following with Hollandale also. They've been playing a lot, a freshman quarterback. <laughs> That can go either way. You don't see a lot of freshmen playing at the high school level, playing varsity. Uh, so you got to be pretty special to be able to do that. Well, Coach Jones understands this. It may not go every every which way he wants it to go in the 2012 season. But if you commit to a freshman now, at some point, it's going to click in. It's either going to be the, it's going to be this year, a sophomore year, a junior year, or a senior year. So it's just a matter of time when you go through the growing pains with a quality freshman quarterback. Well, Hollandale found out a lot about their team this past weekend, a big matchup against South Plantation. Let's take a look at some of the other big highlights from around Dade and Broward County with Joe Rose. Thanks, Don and Joe. Let's go to Friday night highlights and let's start with the big game. St. Thomas Aquinas at home taking on Don Bosco out of New Jersey. This one was all about special teams first quarter. St. Thomas punting it away, but it's blocked. Don Bosco recovers and waltzes into the end zone for the touchdown. The Raiders down 10 0. St. Thomas battles back to tie it up, but in the third quarter, the special team's nightmare continues. Mark Barr musts the punt inside the 10. Bosco recovers on the one yard line, and they punch it in the very next play. Raiders lose this game 20 10 at home. Battle of 2 0 teams in Broward. Hallandale hosting South Plantation. South Plant running back Alex Collins is verbally committed to University of Miami, and I think they're going to like this run. Check this out. Cuts it back. Great run from 25 yards out for the touchdown. The Paladins improved to 3-0 with a 21-13 win. An afternoon game between Berlin Jesuit and Gulliver Prep. Down 14-7. Gulliver ties it up. Bo Ellis catches the swing pass and scampers 15 yards for the game tying touchdown, 14 all. But the Wolverines outlast Gulliver. Fourth quarter, nice tough run by Alex Didiossi. He breaks loose and goes 30 yards to pay dirt. Bolin wins a thriller, 35 to 33. Down at Harris Field in Homestead, Corey facing Homestead High. The Broncos airing it out early. First quarter, Maurice Alexander rolls out, throws it deep to Ehrman Lane. The throw catching the run, 93-yard touchdown bomb. Homestead rolls big, 29-13. Let's go to Hylia High on the road in Punta Gorda facing Charlotte High. First quarter, Cesar Manessis squirms through the middle for a short touchdown run. 7-0, T-Bretts, Hialeah holds on in this one for a 22-21 win. Check out SouthFloridaHighSchoolFootball.com where you will find recruiting overview powered by Larry Bluestein, review the weekly top 20, preview the top games in Dade and Broward County, catch up on Shaquille Jackson's blog and game recaps, nominate candidates for player of the year and for high school teacher of the year, catch any of this season's TV shows you may have missed, plus a whole bunch more. The South Florida High School Football Show is brought to you by Metro PCS, the U.S. Army, BP Gasoline, U18 Sports Medicine, Adidas, Sir Pizza, South Florida Chevy Dealers, Tico People's Gas, and Dave and & Buster's. A few years ago, I decided to push myself further. College, graduate school, degrees in aeronautics and engineering. And I learned that being my best means getting the best from everyone around me. Becoming an Army officer taught me to set high objectives and quickly rise to meet them. Kind of like a rocket. An Army officer learns to reach new heights and inspires others to do the same. Can you? Find out at GoArmy.com slash officer. They watch me all the time. And I think my mom found my stashes for pizza boxes. My parents are totally convinced that my ranch dressing habit is becoming a serious problem. I told them I only eat squares and with only crumbled bits of pepperoni. They say that's how it all starts. They just don't understand how good it is. A special blend of cheese, the sauce, the crunchiness, the dough. But I can totally stop whenever I want. It's not a problem. I'm in complete control. Six point nine is a breakthrough. Six point nine is a physics lesson. Six point nine is the outer limits. Six point nine is an explosion. Uh oh, he just got faster. Six point 
nine is ounces, and that makes this the lightest ever. The recruiting segment is brought to you by Metro PCF, wireless for all. Welcome back to the South Florida High School football show. Joe Zagacki alongside Don Bailey Jr. Coming to you from Dave and Buster's right here in Hollywood. Come on out and see us here at Dave and Buster's. Okay, Don Bailey Jr., time for our recruiting segment. This weekend, we're talking about the running backs, and that is always a great position in Dayton Broward. It certainly is, Joe, and what's amazing about it is the different tastes that colleges have for running backs. Some guys like the fact that they want the scat back, the shorter, faster, quicker guy. Somebody wants the bigger, long strider. It's really a matter of taste and what spits in the offense, but the thing that's always amazed me about South Florida talent at that position is that if they don't make it at running back, they're usually such great athletes and have such great athletic skills, they can be flipped over to cornerback and vice versa. You've seen some cornerbacks that have been moved over to the offensive side of the ball, but running back is a very, very highly sought after position in college football. And as we saw last year, there's a lot of difference makers that come out of South Florida at that position. You might have a Hall of Fame team one day with all the running backs coming out of South Florida. Considering all of the spread attacks, it's amazing that we continue to produce great running backs. Well, it really is, too. And, you know, if you just take Duke Johnson, it's already early in the season, but Duke Johnson is a guy that was the best in the state at that position last year. And really, some people consider the best in the country coming out of Norland High School. His first couple weeks at the University of Miami, he's leading in all-purpose yards. So he's so well-groomed up, and that's a credit to the coaching in South Florida that he can catch it, he can run it, and he can also return it. And that's when the big schools come down here. That's what they want is that multi-purpose guy. And you know what those big schools do with those? running backs they call them they call and them on the running phone. backs get the call just like we're going to do with Larry Bluestein on our Metro PCS Huawei Activa I'm right waiting here. for you to call Big Blue right, I'm dialing them up right now okay Blue let's hear about those running backs Joe Don thank you very much and I'll tell you what when you talk about running backs the class of 2014 is one that everybody's looking forward to but what about the class of 2013 we'll start it down in Dade County where there's two players from the same team that are among the best first of all for the Columbus team you have Daryl Chestnut this is a kid who's a 5'10", 190 pounder, very fast. He's an elusive guy. He's one of those 10 carries for 170 yard uh, type of kids. And then his teammate, uh, this is another big time back, Lorenzo Woodley, a bigger back, six foot, 200 pounds. If you remember last year, he got some of those tough yards, even back as far as his sophomore year on national television. If you remember the game against Northwestern, he's the one that did most of the damage. So the one-two punch at Columbus will come from Darryl Chestnut and also Woodley. But there's another running back in Dade County to keep an eye on. He's been getting it done for two years. He's from Gulliver Prep and he's Bo Ellis. This is one of those elusive guys, a tough to bring down type of runner, a tackle to tackle runner. I'm telling you, in Dade County, even though the, the future with the 2014 and 15 players are going to be very bright, there's three 2013. Moving into De Broward County, it doesn't get any easier. I'll tell you, if you're going to look at some of the tremendous athletes in Broward County, what about about a running back like Alex Collins. Made his commitment to the University of Miami. At this time last year, nobody really knew much about him. But the 5'11", 200 pounder had an excellent season. One of the best runners in, in South Florida. Turned out to be a national recruit. The University of Miami committed him. And I'm telling you, this is a, a kid. Now remember, he, he's an athlete that could really turn the tide for the future and keep that Duke Johnson thing going, the little train that they started last year. Also in Broward County, Matt Days from Cypress Bay. Hard runner, starting for three years. If you remember two years ago, he was in the mix against Northeast. He was, he was the one carrying the ball against Central. Now he has a senior year, and he's doing excellent. Well, you can't do running backs without talking about St. Thomas Aquinas, and they have a good one in Fred Coppett. Another one, 10th grader, if you remember back in the state championship game against Lakeland, he's the one that scored that 72-yarder right before the, the halftime. So, you know, when, when you take a look at some of the Broward County kids and the Day County kids, there's no, there's no reason to think that 2014 is going to be the only year for running backs. So, guys, I just gave you six tremendous running backs, three from Dade and three from Broward. They're big time. Thanks, Larry. Tico, people's gas. Before you pick up the shovel, pick up the phone, call 811. Tico, people's gas is awarding the Player of the Year Award to one player in Miami-Dade and one player in Broward. To nominate a player, visit SouthFloridaHighSchoolFootball.com. Look for the Tico Vote Here icon. Nominations are open until November 30th. Players take home a beautiful crystal trophy 
and the schools that vote the most receive a $500 donation. The winners will be announced during our National Signing Day TV show on February the 6th. The Sports Medicine Timeout is brought to you by U18 Sports Medicine, your sports medicine provider for the young athlete. The South Florida High School football show continues now with our U18 Sports Medicine Timeout coming to you from the Joe DiMaggio Children's Hospital. We are in Daniela's atrium with Dr. Stephen Storr. This week's topic, doctor, is a really good one and somewhat confusing. We're going to talk about a shoulder injury and the difference between dislocation and separation. Right. Well, let's start with the most minor, and that's the shoulder separation. It's actually a sprain between the clavicle and the acromion. A dislocation is actually when the shoulder joint, the humeral head, pops out of its socket. That's much more severe. All right. Well, they both sound painful to me. But the separation has different degrees, right? Right. Separation is actually graded uh, from one to six, with one the most mild and six the most severe. What kind of timeline are you looking with a separation? Right. Separation, you can be uh, back to playing ball in about three to four weeks. Shoulder dislocation usually means surgery. Yeah, now dislocation is a whole different deal, surgery and more extensive rehab. Right. Usually it's surgery with about four months of rehab, although separation also does well with rehab. Okay, very good. Thank you very much for the valuable information. The Teacher of the Year Award is brought to you by the South Florida Chevy Dealer. Chevy runs deep. The South Florida Chevy Dealers will be recognizing outstanding educators and handing out $4,000 in donation. Help us by nominating a high school teacher for the 2012 South Florida Chevy Dealers High School Teacher of the Year Award. Chevy will award a crystal trophy to one teacher in each county, plus each teacher's school wins a $2,000 general donation. Visit SouthFloridaHighSchoolFootball.com to learn how to nominate a teacher for consideration. We are accepting nominations until January 16th. Winners will be announced February 6th. More of the South Florida High School Football Show after this. The Chevy Cruze Echo also offers 42 MPG on the highway. Actually, it's Cruze Eco, not Echo. Just like either. Or either. Or economical. Or economical. <laughs> potato, potato, huh? Actually, it's tomato, tomato. Oh, that's right. <laughs> See your South Florida Chevy dealer. That's 42 miles per gallon highway on the fuel-efficient Chevy Cruze Eco. Come on in today and check it out for yourself. Eco People's Gas presents Make the Call. Hey, uh, what's Bert digging up? I don't know, planting a tree? Did he call 811, you know, before he, he started? Ah, it doesn't sound like it. Before you pick up the shovel, pick up the phone. Dial 811 and get your utility lines marked for free. Avoid the fines. Don't hit the lines. If you hit a utility line, you can interrupt your service and your neighbors too. Know exactly what you're digging yourself into. Call 811. Brought to you by Tico People's Gas. <laughs> Rhapsody puts millions of songs on your Metro phone so you can create your life soundtrack. That's why everybody's moving to Metro. The Coach of the Week is brought to you by Adidas. All in. The South Florida High School football show continues coming to you from Dave and Buster's, your eat, drink, and play destination to enjoy serious football action. Joe Zagacki with Don Bailey Jr. As we move on to our Coach of the Week segment, we're going up to Dillard High School to talk with Lorenzo Davis. And the first thing I think about with Coach Davis is his discipline background. Don, he was a principal at a middle school for the middle school that feeds Dillard High School. Sure, if you're looking at a resume, that would be something that you would want, wouldn't it? I mean, when you think about the ability to translate to kids that age, to implement discipline to, to young men at that age, and then you have that combined with a ball coach, I think it's a perfect combination. And of course, two other guys have been very influential in his career by the name of Jim Tressel and Chuck Knoll. Yeah, I would think if you look at those guys' careers as coaches, you would want anybody to have played or had an experience under them. You look at Knoll, he won all the Super Bowls with the Steelers, and then Jim Tressel, what he did at Youngstown, and then took that over to Ohio State. His success was remarkable. Lorenzo Davis is the Adidas Coach of the Week. Adidas all in. Here's Brian Saul. 
Well, thanks, Joe and Don. We got a new face here for our Adidas Coach of the Week. We're with Dillard's Lorenzo Davis. He's familiar to Dillard. He graduated, played under Otis Gray. Coach, you got a great pedigree. You played under Gray. You went to Youngstown State, the Hall of Famer there under a guy named Jim Tressel. You go to the NFL, another guy named Chuck Knoll. How has that helped you evolve from a coach to where you are now? Um, it helped me a lot to um, teach you guys about um, you got to build good character when you're trying to get something done. If you build good character, you'll learn how to win games. Coach, you've been around the Dillard uh, fan base for the past couple of years. How much has your love for Dillard, and how do you see that passion just transforming as being the head coach now? I'm really trying to get that passion back. You know, I think we fell off a little bit, but now we're bringing it back. Um, the guys starting to believe in the program. They're working hard. The community believing, so we're just moving forward. You got two state titles from this program, 60 playoff appearances, second most in Broward County. How do you get the players to stay close to home and have that sense of pride that was once there when you guys were playing? Well, I talked to the guys about um, I feel like Dillard is the most watched team in the Fort Lauderdale. And um, see some guys that um, would you be the next great guy who played at Dillard High School and give back. So we're just trying to teach all the guys to be the next and be, be better than the previous guys. Can you take us through the process of being a new coach and what it's like from the players and, and how you introduce yourselves to them? Just got to build on um, good character. We had a lot of different guys come talk to them, previous Dillard High School grad, keeping the community, whatever, and just start building good character and let them know that it's bigger than football. Show them different things, you know, take a run out to the beach, you know, go to Vista View Park. You know, show them different places that they've never been and um, do different things with them. That was the big key. Coach, you're developing a new offense now. How has the offense looked so far, and uh, what kind of players jump out to you? I mean, we, we got some good skilled players. Um, we, we got young quarterbacks, so, I mean, it's it going to be new, but we got some guys who believe in the program, so I feel like they could get it done. You, you, you seem like a speed guy. Yeah, we got a lot of speed, but, um, I mean, sometimes when you're a little short on linemen, you got to use your talent. You can't play other people's talent. You do what you do well, and, um, Everyone do something well, so that's what I tell the guys. What you do well, do it well, and move forward. Well, that's a, a former Panther. He's got the passion. He's got the characters on this team. So this week's Adidas Coach of the Week, Lorenzo Davis from Dillard. Back to you guys at Dave & Buster's. Thanks, Brian. Time now for the Sir Pizza Play of the Week, sponsored by Sir Pizza, good to the very edge. Rivals Columbus and Belen at FIU Stadium. Columbus running back Daryl Chestnut takes the handoff and runs clear. 80 yards to the end zone. That is Chestnut breaking open for the touchdown and your Sir Pizza Play of the Week. Hi, I'm Laura Duramigis with this week's Army Bowl nominees. Brought to you by the U.S. Army, Army Strong. This week we travel up to Broward where we have Jermaine Grace, an outside linebacker from Miramar High School, who measures in at 6'2 and 215 pounds. As a junior, Grace racked up 115 tackles and four sacks for the Patriots. He has offers from many schools such as North Carolina, UCF, West Virginia, and his main interest, Miami. Next up, Alex Collins, the running back from South Plantation. Collins is 5'11 and 180 pounds. In 2011, he was named Player of the Year for Broward County by Sun Sentinel. He ran over 1,700 yards and had an outstanding 27 touchdowns. Collins is committed to the University of Miami and made his decision over schools such as Florida State and Wisconsin. The South Florida High School Football Show is also on Facebook and Twitter. Like us at SFHSFS and follow us at HSF Ball as soon as you can. You'll receive weekly updates from our insiders, news, announcements, and game day scoring updates from all over South Florida, plus deals and offers from our partners, including Sir Pizza, Sports Authority, Metro PCS, and many more. And we'll continue right after this. At U18 Sports Medicine, our focus is on treating young athletes. Experienced pediatric orthopedic surgeons from Joe DiMeggio Children's Hospital, Department of Orthopedic Surgery, work with the U18 staff to help meet a variety of needs. X-rays, MRIs, physical therapy, and much more. Our leading-edge facilities located at Memorial Hospital Miramar and Coral Springs are open year-round. U18 can help young athletes stay off the sidelines and on the field. A program of Memorial Healthcare System and Joe DiMaggio Children's Hospital. Visit U18SportsMedicine.com. The Chevy Cruze Echo also offers 42 MPG on the highway. Actually, it's Cruze Eco, not Echo. Just like either or either. Or economical. Or economical. <laughs> potato, potato, huh? Actually, it's tomato, tomato. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> See your South Florida Chevy dealer. 
That's 42 miles per gallon highway on the fuel-efficient Chevy Cruze Eco. Come on in today and check it out for yourself. The car on the left was filled up with low detergent gasoline. While the car on the right was filled up with BP gasoline with Invigorate. Which helps clean and protect its engine. So it can get a few more miles per tank than the car on the left. Go a little farther with BP gasoline with Invigorate. The keys to the game are brought to you by BP Gasoline with Invigorate, the preferred fuel of the South Florida High School Football Show. Welcome back to the South Florida High School Football Show. Joe Zagacki with Don Bailey Jr. Coming to you from Dave and Buster's, your eat, drink, and play destination to enjoy serious football action. Speaking of serious football action, we have some coming up this weekend here in high school football and on the radio on WQAM. Our broadcast game next weekend is going to be a really good one. Northwestern and Carroll City. For more on that, here is Mike Levine. Thanks, guys. Our matchup this week, Carroll City and Northwestern, two great programs that have a long history. Carroll City trying to get back at the top where they belong. Harold Barnwell, the head coach, who was tutored, of course, by Walt Frazier a handful of years ago. Stephen Field, the first-year head coach on the sidelines for Northwestern, always D1 players all over the field. It's a tremendous matchup that brings out a lot of the fans' excitement. You'll see some energizing plays. Both of those teams play really fast and very exciting. That's the game that we'll have for our game of the week, Carroll City and Northwestern. Joe, Don, back to you. All right, Mike, thank you very much. Well, our theme of serious football action, when these two teams get together, no matter what the record is, Northwestern Carroll City is pretty serious. It's big, Joe. They're going to fill up the trash, and, and why not? you got great excitement on both sides of the football. We talked about earlier in the show about Northwestern on defense. They've been big with the takeaway, but now we have to find out if they can stop the run because the Chiefs at Carroll City have got a running game that's going that churns up a lot of clock and a whole bunch of yards. Harold Barnwell over there, and uh, this one is about pride as well. Well, it is, and Coach Barnwell has done a phenomenal job filling in for Coach Walt Frazier. He came in and replaced Coach Frazier, and they're still a disciplined football team on both sides of the football but I'll tell you th this game has got bragging rights and it's going to fill the place up and it's exciting if you if you want to hear it and be at a game this is the one to go to. We're talking a little bit about Dillard on this show let's go to Broward County Dillard in action next week against Hollandale and Dillard has an exciting quarterback by the name of Lee Martin he has got a big arm he's also the son of a coach and so you know he's smart. Well, listen, if, if, let's say that even if he has some struggles, they're going to talk about it at the dinner table. So he's getting all the extra coaches that he can handle. And we talked about Hollandale as well, and they're a team that, that's kind of moving along, chugging along, and we need to make sure that, that they get that defense on the field so they can slow down that passing game of Dillard. Yeah, Lee Martin, he's going to face a defense that likes to disguise a lot of different things along the defensive line. They're pretty sophisticated at Hollandale. Well, when you are sophisticated, the thing that, that leaves is you got to execute it. That means that you got to hit those gaps, hit the right gap, and make sure you make the tackle when they, the runner confronts you. So it's going to be an interesting ball game. And once again, we've got two great ball games scheduled for this weekend. No question about that. All right, so get out there and see uh, your local high school. Some great players out there, some great games. And we'll have all the action once again for you next week. For Don Bailey Jr., I'm Joe Zagacki. We'll see you next Sunday right here on the South Florida High School Football Show. The South Florida High School Football Show is brought to you by Metro PCS, the U.S. Army, BP Gasoline, U18 Sports Medicine, Adidas, Sir Pizza, South Florida Chevy Dealers, Tico People's Gas and Dave and Busters. When they start a new era for Hollandale football. First time yeah. playoff, that's what it is. It's a big game, fellas. A big game. Yeah. Number one. Yeah. Number one a minute. Yeah. Put them out. Yeah. Yeah. Number one a minute. Yeah. Hey, we're going to turn up tonight. Yeah. We're going to turn up tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Turn up. 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 We're gonna make a lot of proud the whole state and go hit this thing, bro. We're gonna bounce tonight, fellas. We're gonna fly around tonight. We're gonna